The Salty Sea Salty and Toby were having a conversation at the docks. Aye, here's another story about the sea. Is the sea all you talk about, Salty? It seems every single word that comes out of your mouth starts or ends with the word sea. That's right, Toby. The sea is my homeland. It's quite possible that you've gotten too, infatua too infatuated with the sea. Why don't you come down to the quarry with me, and I can get your mind off of the sea. Hmm, that's a toughie. I really love the sea and all the, the dock side, but I really do think I should learn about something new. Yeah, I'll come along. Great. Just pick up your load and meet me down at the quarry. Okay, said Salty as Toby puffed away. Salty felt sad about leaving the dock, as he hasn't left the dock in such a long time. He's worked there every single day for as long as he can remember. Well, some things have just got to change, said Salty as he picked up his load. And got off. Salty arrived at the quarry, only to find it a very dirty and grimy place. <coughs> How do you guys breathe, me hearties? It's impossible with all this dust. After a while, you get used to it, assured Toby. Salty, we have a lot of jobs to do, said Boko. So you better get cracking. Here's a load just for you. Salty backed up and coupled to his load. I miss the sea already, he groaned to himself. While doing his chores, Salty told the other engines many, many stories about the sea until the engines couldn't stand it anymore. Salty, you have to stop thinking about the sea every single second of the day. I know it's fun and it's nice to have something you like. Everybody should have something they like. But no one should have something that they talk about every single day. Oh yeah, well this sea is better than this old quarry here. It's so dusty, you can't even breathe. I'm not saying anything against the sea. I'm just saying that sometimes you need to think about other things. Well, you can actually smell things at the sea. Here at this quarry, all the dust clogs up your nose, so you can't smell anything. Don't get so frustrated, Salty. We're just saying. I know what you're saying, and I don't like it. Good day. And Salty stormed off. I gotta go fix this once and for all, and Mavis followed after him. Mavis finally caught up to Salty after a chase that lasted nearly ten minutes. Salty, I'm terribly sorry for what happened over at the quarry. I believe a train, if they want to talk about something so much that even if it drives the other trains crazy, I think they have the right to talk about it. All the time. Aye, but you don't speak for Toby and Boko. They think I should not talk about the sea so much. But, Salty, hey, do you know what the funny thing is? No, what? replied Salty. Toby actually talks about his windmill even more than you talk about the sea. So, don't feel bad and don't feel that you're the only one who talks about something all the time. Really? Ha, huh, that's kind of funny. But isn't that kind of hypocritical? As he talks about something all the time and he tells me that I shouldn't? Huh, that's kind of confusing, isn't it, Mavis? Yes, it is, Salty. Now come back to the quarry with me so we can get our jobs done. The two went back to the quarry. When Mavis 
and Salty arrived back. Salty had something to tell all the engines. I'm sorry for being so sensitive about my sea. You see, I always grew up with the sea, and it's really the only thing I've grew to learn. I hope you guys forgive me. Toby and I were talking over it while you and Mavis were gone, said Boko, and we have now learned to take your stories and learn from them. And we will listen to them every day if you choose to come back. What do you say? Well, I guess I'll be coming back soon. Hooray, all three engines cried. Salty comes and visits the quarry every day now. But he never stops telling stories about the sea.